In this video, I'll explain how you can easily handle errors when using React, Apollo GraphQL, and Apollo's reactive variables. So here's a quick demo of what we're going to accomplish. As you can see here, I've got a project list, and if I go to add a project, I'll just call it my test project, you can see that I'm met with an error message or a toast. This also works for uh, network errors. So if I go over to here and set um, my Chrome browser to be offline, and go again with my test project, you can see it does the same thing. It's really simple to do, um, so let's dive into the code and see how it's done. So if you're familiar with Apollo Client and GraphQL and React, this should be quite familiar. The main thing we want to look at into uh, catching all of these GraphQL errors is basically how we instantiate the Apollo Client and the link. And you can see here that I've got a link in uh, this directory and then I've also got a cache in this directory which is basically just uh, declaring a in-memory cache. And one of the things that we actually want to look at is an error link. And you can see the documentation here. This is an error link. Um, this link will be in the description below. But essentially you pass this to your link uh, object in the Apollo client when you instantiate it, it's options and it will catch your errors for you. Back to here, I've actually moved my link into its own file because I just wanted to keep things clean. Um, you might not do this, you might obviously have it all in here and you might have your links sort of referenced here. Um, but in my link TS, let's just copy this and paste that in. And we want the error link to run first, right? So we just take error link and what we'll do is we'll put it in front of everything. Um, so if GraphQL error is basically just going to log in the messages. So now if we go back to our client and then we refresh and then we do the same thing that was broken, my test project, we now get a message. Um, this user subscription plan does not exist, the user must have a subscription plan. Now ignore that, that was the catalyst of this video, which is on what I'm going to work on next. Um, so yeah, so now we're logging the errors. Um, what stumped me, which was kind of hard to find and which prompted me to actually make this video, is that how do you then display these error messages to the user? And the way I've done that is with reactive variables. Um, and it's really nice because reactive variables comes with a hook and basically they're a way of you to be able to store state but not within the, um, the Apollo cache. So you don't have to do a mutation, you don't have to do a, a query, you can simply just set a value and read a value, which is really nice. So in my cache file, I'm going to declare a variable which will store a value in a reactive variable for Apollo. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, global error message var, and it's going to be a function of make var from Apollo client. And this can be anything you want. Um, so I'm actually going to make it into a object with a field of message and the, the key of null. And because I'm using TypeScript here, I'm just going to go ahead and put in message is a string or it is null. And we also want to export this as well so we can use it elsewhere. So let's just export that as well. Now all we want to do is just import that variable, the global error message var, into our link file. Um, this is just so we can use it when the on error function is called. And what we'll do is we'll just say let message is null. And rather than logging these, let's return this whole thing. Because this will be multiple errors for now. So I'm just going to return the whole thing. Um, but then I'm just going to join any errors with a so any, if there's an array of graphical errors, it will just basically be multiples of these, right? And the same with, oh, sorry, let's just set message to be that. And then set message to be a string or null. Oh, a string or null. And we want to do the same if there is a network error. So we can just say if network error message equals network error. And then once that's all done, we can basically set the global error message variable, the message to be message. Oh, message to be message. Wonderful. So that's brilliant. So now we're going to have the global error message saved in the reactive variable. And now what we can do 
is in a router, I'm going to add a global error toast. And then we're going to make a new folder in components called global error toast. And then make a new file called index.tsx. And we're going to call it const global error toast. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the reactive variable hook, which is really nice. So let's try and find the reactive variable hook. Use reactive var from Apollo client. Brilliant. So then with that, we can do const error message. Now this is just a read, right? So use reactive var. And we actually need to pass in the variable. So we can do import global error message var from our source core Apollo cache. So that's where it's saved. So global error message var. So that's going to read that and give us it, right? And let's just do that console log error message. So now if we go here, title, my test project. Confirm. Aha, uh -huh, we have a message. Brilliant. So we can easily use this with um, a toast. So the QE is actually built using Evergreen UI. Uh, I can put this in the description. It's built by Segment. It's really nice. Um, and they have a toast package. So let's just find where I've used it before. So toast, toast to notify. Or it would probably be danger for this. So, and what we want to do is only only run this when error message updates. So if error message, message. The reason I've done it as an object, just in case I actually want to add any more contextual information in the future. So if error message dot message, we want a toaster. Let's just get IntelliSense to put that in. Notify, and that's going to be changed to danger to error message dot message. Danger. Get rid of that. Cool. So now, when I do my test project, I get an error. Brilliant, simple as that. And again, this will work with offline as well. And even though our error on error is obviously referencing, you know more developer style errors, you can change these to be whatever you want. Um, but the main principle of getting client errors to show the user is actually a lot more simpler than you think.